Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. If you need a website, go to squarespace.com forward slash Heaton. All right. So I've decided last minute to go on a photography trip <laughs> to Scotland. I've got a, a few uh, spare days and uh, looks like it could be interesting conditions, quite stormy and uh, possibly lots of snow. So I've thrown everything in the van. So I've got fridge with some food in it, but need to go to the supermarket. I've got a Jackery 1000 here for extra power. Now this is where the real chaos begins. I've got my big winter jacket because I'm expecting some snowfall. Um, I need to go to the post office to post some books. Thank you to everyone who's ordered. And here I've got some clothes, a wash bag, a little bit of food and kitchen gear, cooking gear. All my camera gear is in the back in there. So I need to get all of this sorted out, packed away, go to the post office, and then I can begin the long drive up to Scotland. Office done, and now we're looking at a good five hour drive to Glencoe. So I don't know if this is coming across on camera, but you can see we've had blue skies all day, but if you look ahead, there's a lot of storm clouds on the horizon. Well, that is Scotland. And all of those clouds, all of that weather is what we're driving through and driving towards. And I'm hoping that it's gonna contain a lot of snowfall. And that's kind of what I'm banking on for tomorrow's photography. So we've got the Delica four wheel drive, should be able to handle all weathers that Scotland can throw at us. We'll see because there's some pretty heavy storms forecast. All right, uh, we have pulled up at a supermarket, quick food stocks, I need something for dinner tonight and for breakfast, and then we will continue on this journey north to Scotland. Okay, so we have made it safely to, uh, well, I was going to say Glencoe, but it's actually Rannoch Moor. Um, it was a fairly straightforward drive. I'd say about the last 10 miles we started to get some snowfall, and now we're up on Rannock Moor, and I don't know if you can hear it. Hang on a second. Like, the van is rocking. Like, it's blowing outside. And the snow plows are out, plowing the roads and it seems to be snow showers at the minute. Um, but yeah, I'll tell you, I'll, um, I'll show you outside. Okay, that's enough of that. Ugh. So I don't know if you can tell uh, from that, uh, a bit of snow, a bit of snow, but not, not, not too much. But I'm hoping a lot more is gonna come overnight and we'll wake up to a, a winter wonderland. But for now, I'm gonna cook some food um, and get settled in for the night. It's cold as well, it's about minus two degrees Celsius. I'm gonna try and cook something adventurous. So I thought, uh, I've got my little ridge monkey, my uh, little little pan, little frying pan, that, you know, seems to cook everything. I thought we'd see if we could knock out a pizza. Really fancy a pizza. So, uh, yeah, I'm interested. Okay, seems like we have our first problem. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's not fitting on there. Right, we're gonna have to do some trimming. Trimming of the pizza. Okay, so there we have a, uh, a pizza that seems to fit perfectly in my little ridge monkey. So, um, man, I hope this works. There's no reason why this won't work. There's no reason why this won't work at all. And I should get a delicious crispy pizza on this incredibly cold and stormy evening. Yes. Oh. oh, yes. All right, 
that is one pizza, I would say. <laughs> a bit in a hard shape. Ow. And of course, my uh, off cuts are not going to waste. They'll be getting cooked up as well as a, as a little snack afterwards. Probably too much. I, uh, I said before this was a last minute trip, a rush trip. I've got my camera, my GFX 50R in the back of the van. I've thrown a few clothes in, a bit of food, and I've come up to Scotland because I saw in the forecast that there was some snowfall um, that was due to hit, a bit of a storm and hopefully a good dumping of snow. So I've basically taken advantage of having this van and uh, here I am, five hours later, left my house and now I'm in Glencoe. And I have no idea what I'm going to do with myself over the next few days. I have zero plans. And I think that's how I like it. Sometimes. Sometimes that's how I like it. But yeah, I don't know. Looking forward to it. Looking forward to it. No idea what to do tomorrow. I don't know if you can hear that. It's, uh, it's hammering it down outside. It's not snow. It's not hail. It's just like little snow pellets like uh, polystyrene pellets battering the side of the van it's interesting i'm gonna i'm curious to see what it's going to be like in the morning yeah let's have a look oh. all right ladies and gentlemen it's time for me to go to bed um i am gonna sleep well through this storm i hope and It'll be interesting to see what we're going to get tomorrow morning. So I'll see you guys in a short while. Uh, last night was interesting. This where I am now, this is my third park up. Um, yeah, I had a bit of a mare last night. I uh, arrived at my first park up, and what I didn't realize at the time is that that parking area doubled as a turning point for the snow plows. Now, there was no issues with the snow plows getting around. I was tucked away in a little corner, but the issue was about once every hour or so, a snowplow with its big yellow flashing lights and its incredibly loud engine and, and mechanics would come, reverse into the parking bay, shuffle around, sometimes wait five minutes, and then set off again. It was impossible to sleep, so at about midnight, I drove to another park up that I know about, which is a ski center, and they used to allow park ups where you would just park in the car park and there was an honesty box it was fantastic now for whatever reason that's been scrapped um, maybe it was abused um, I really don't know so I've ended up here third park up and um, so I'm absolutely knackered I haven't slept been driving around Glencoe all night trying to find somewhere to uh, park up for the evening anyway time for a uh, coffee if I can get this bag open <laughs> come on oh jeez it's like a giant tea bag. So I don't know if you can hear it, but we've got the diesel heater going. It is brutal outside. It was about minus two, but it must be blowing sort of 15 to 20 mile an hour winds, gusting easily to 30 or 40 miles an hour. So I don't, you know, I dread to think what the wind chill factor is out there. Um, snowing on and off, gray skies. So needless to say, I'm in no rush to get out with my camera. So I'll relax enjoy the morning, have some breakfast, and then we'll see if we can take advantage of this foreboding weather that we have outside. Woo! Oh, that is windy. I'll be honest with you, I have really, really struggled to get up and out today. Man, it's cold, it's windy. I didn't sleep at all last night, as I mentioned. And uh, yeah, so I've just kind of forced myself out and just see what I see. So I don't think I'm going to use the tripod at the minute. I'm just going to go handheld. Uh, there's, you know, we're going to have really, really bright conditions when the sunlight hits the snow. And with image stabilization, I would argue that actually I'll be able to get a steadier shot than on the tripod because when the wind hits the tripod, it vibrates. 
or as in my arms, although I'm getting hit by the wind, I'm not vibrating, so yeah, should be better. We just need to wait and hope for the light now. So we have this uh, this peak just behind me. It's, it's fairly mundane looking, if I'm honest. Man, I'm, I'm really sorry about the wind noise. You know, it's not that dramatic of a peak, but look at the clouds behind it. Look how black and foreboding those clouds are. Well, the sun's coming out now. <laughs> as soon as I get back, the sun comes out. I tell you what, it's hard work, man. Hard work. It's blowing, blowing something, I tell you. Probably easy 15 to 30 gusting. It's madness. And then you've got the cold and the snow. ended up leaving Glencoe and I was driving and I just I, I was struggling to get inspired because I've shot Glencoe so many times and the wind and the, the snow turned to rain and it got really bad so I've decided to grab a coffee and move on I don't know where <laughs> don't know where that's the beauty of having a van you just go where go where you want to go so I'll keep driving north and as soon as this coffee kicks in, I'll probably make a decision because I'll get to a crossroads soon. And at that crossroads, I'll either need to go northwest or northeast. So we'll see. After a, uh, a bit of a drive from Glencoe, we've arrived in Glen Affric and I pulled into this car park and instantly saw a shot and I just thought, do you know what, let's be a bit lazy today because to be honest with you, I'm not feeling overly photographic today. Like, I just want to sleep, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, but the snow's coming down and uh, I couldn't resist these two beautiful Scots pines, nice and easy, straight from the car park. And uh, the way I'm feeling today, I'll take it. a bit of a mare today. I was just looking through the images on the back of my camera, all two of them, and oh, it's just been one of those, I think I need to, um, I'm sorry for the video being all over the place, you know, two seconds ago I was walking through the snow and now I'm here in the van. I think I need to put the kettle on and um, have a bit of a breakdown of today's events. So today has been an absolute mare for me. 
absolute mare, to be honest with you. Um, but I thought it'd be interesting to look at why and what happened. So um, I've taken two images. I've had nothing else today, nothing else. But what's more notable for myself is that I've had a very, very obvious and clear lack of enthusiasm. Like, I, if I wasn't making YouTube videos, <laughs> when it wasn't my job, and I didn't have to churn them out on a weekly basis, I honestly believe I would have just either gone home or just stayed in the van all day and done nothing but drink tea and eat biscuits. Um, it's, it's just, I, I, I not once today have I felt the urge to go out with my camera. Which is crazy because we have beautiful conditions, you know, fantastic stormy snowfall, and I'm in a fantastic location. But I think I put it down to a terrible night's sleep and building up my expectations too high. But the thing is, I've had a pretty decent run lately, um, <laughs> as, as a matter of opinion, of course. But the last few videos I've put out, I've been really proud of, and I've enjoyed a lot of the images that have been in those videos. And the truth is, you don't nail it every day you know days like today are very common where you just can't make images work can't find compositions you know creatively you struggle certainly for me anyway so it's about time i had a day like today and a video like today so you know thank god i've got the van because tell you what the van makes for good filming and good adventure i've had a great time in the van just not such a good time with my camera enough about that anyway it sounds like i'm moaning i'm really not um, you know, it's just, is what it is, one of those days. I'm more optimistic for tomorrow. I have no idea what the weather forecast is doing, but I've moved spots now. I'm in a, a different park up, closer to an area that should lend itself to some very nice photography in the morning. But for now, I'm starving, so I'm gonna finish my tea, grab a bite to eat, and um, yeah, just relax, man. I think too much pressure, put too much pressure on myself with these videos, and my photography. So I just need to forget about that and enjoy being in the van. All right, because today's been a bit of a disappointment photography-wise, I thought I'd spice things up a bit in the kitchen. That's right, I'm gonna attempt in a single small ridge monkey to make haggis, mashed potato, <laughs> an egg. Seeing as we are in Scotland, why not? All right, let's get the pan warmed up. Fan on, we don't want the haggis, we don't want haggis smell in the van. Oh yeah, there we go. Oh, two haggis. Okay, that's the haggis. Hot, hot, hot. Ow! Done, onto the plate. Is that gonna work? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I think we might be onto a winner here. It's done. Yes. There we go. Oh yes. Mmm. <laughs>
you know, uh, try something now that may or may not work. I was just exploring the edge of this lock and looking for more intimate scenes um, as the wind has begun to pick up. And I found at the bottom of the lock, this area of still water and then submerged in the water, there is a, uh, a fallen tree, like a tree trunk. Um, and it's semi-submerged and parts of the, uh, the tree trunks and branches are actually coming out and penetrating the surface of the water. And I think it might work as a nice little intimate landscape, a little abstract. Let's have a look. Okay. Composition is a little bit tight, but I think it's okay. Might need to do a tiny bit of clone removal on uh, a couple of things that are, are protruding in from the sides, a couple of bits of grass, but might just leave them as well, nothing major. What I am going to do is add a polarizer so I can cut through the glare of the water and reveal much more of the trunk, the tree that is beneath the surface of the water. So it's a bit of a, a bit of a strange one this. The, um, the polarizer is doing its job and showing me more of the subject beneath the surface of the water. Adds a lot of color to the subject, a lot of richness and vibrancy, which is perfect. But it's not polarizing the entire image. It only polarizes a portion of the image, almost like a dark circle. I will try and show you here on camera, but with the bright sky above me, it's difficult for me to show you the screen. But I don't know if you can see that as I spin the polarizer, see that dark circle come in. Now that's fine, but what I'm actually gonna to have to do, which is a bit of a, an odd one, is drop in a graduated filter, hopefully, giving me a balanced image. Okay, there we go. That was F11, focusing on the part of the tree that's protruding out of the water polarizer and a graduated filter, which I never expected by the way, but <laughs> seems to be doing the job nicely. Ah, oh, there we go. Landscape photography is anything you want it to be. Outdoors, in the open fresh air with the camera. To me, that's landscape photography. <laughs> Unless you're shooting animals, then it's nature photography. But uh, yeah, I love it. I love this type of photography, the intimate abstracts of the stuff that a lot of people would just walk right past. So I hope you enjoyed that last image. I know this for a fact. <laughs> Guys, so, so dramatic for a fact. Um, I really enjoyed taking that last image. No idea if it's actually gonna be any good or not, but the process of taking it and uh, framing it, composing it, you know, eyeing up the composition and working with the filters, you know, that was, that was really enjoyable. So uh, with a bit of luck, <laughs> I'm not talking now with egg on my face and it actually looks okay but anyway I'm, I'm hungry I'm gonna go back to the van and get some food before I do I just want to say a big thank you to today's sponsor which is Squarespace if you don't know who Squarespace are they're an all-in-one website building platform so if you want your own photography website with your own domain online gallery online shop everything you could ever want on a website but you don't understand how to build one the complicated way well, you can just do it all through Squarespace using their drag and drop system. They've got 24-7 customer support. And I reckon within a few hours, half a day, a day, whatever, you'll knock up a really good professional looking website. So if you fancy giving that a go, go to squarespace.com forward slash Heaton and give it a free try. And if you like a free try, you'll use the offer code Heaton for 10% off your first purchase. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you next week, hopefully. <laughs> Please come back. Ah, <sighs> goodbye.